in this video, we are going to evaluate the sum of the following fractions. 1 over 1 times 2 times 3, 1 over 2 times 3 times 4, all the way up to 1 over 100 times 101 times 102. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. So first of all, let's take a look at the patterns of these fractions. So you can see that all the numbers at the denominator at these parts they are all the products of consecutive positive integers and there are three of them in each fraction the second thing is that the numbers actually repeat between consecutive fractions and for this case we have two numbers repeating so basically one two three and then we'll keep the two three and then it goes to the third one which is four and then for the third fraction, it'll be 3, 4, 5, and then 4, 5, 6, and so on. And altogether, there are 100 fractions. So this is slightly complicated, but in fact, we can solve this, we can evaluate this sum by considering, by looking at another chain of fractions, which is much simpler than this case. And we can use the similar trick to solve this problem. Now, this is the chain of fractions that I said that we can take reference to. For this chain, the num we only repeat one number among the two. So 1, 2 for the first fraction, and then we keep the 2. And for the second fraction, we have 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, and so on. Again, we have 100 fractions over here. So some of you may have already known this trick, which is that for each fraction, 1 over the product of two consecutive numbers, we can split it into the difference of two fractions taking actually the same numbers, which is 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2. So we are keeping the same numbers. And similarly, we can do, we can apply this trick on all other fractions in this sum. So notice that I'm actually adding all of these fractions and you can imagine that if I start with 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 and then add it by 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 the next pair will be 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 and we can keep going and at last we have plus 1 over 100 minus 1 over 101 now the reason that this trick is useful because the numbers repeat itself, which means the twos repeat, and then similarly the threes repeat, and so on. And because we have one plus and one minus, so actually the numbers cancel out. Maybe you can use a different color, they cancel out. And in fact, we can keep cancelling until the end. And in fact, this fraction 1 over 100 will also be cancelled out because supposedly there should be another fraction at this front, which is minus 1 over 100. And after cancelling so many terms, we'll only have 1 over 1 minus 1 over 101 at the end. And so we know that this sum is a hundred is a hundred over a hundred and one. Just a slight a small remark on why this trick would work is that as I've mentioned just now, I'm actually considering fractions on the form one over product of two consecutive numbers. So it's actually of the form one over n times n plus one, and in fact. I claim that it's going to be equal to 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1, keeping the two numbers at the bottom, and I'm just doing a subtraction between the two fractions. Now, indeed, if I try to take a common denominator on the difference of these two fractions, I have n times n plus 1. Now, for the numerator, it becomes n plus 1 minus n. 
And so by simplifying, we know that it's really exactly equal to 1 over n times n plus 1. So these two are equal. That means these three expressions are equal. So that means we can really use this trick and obtain the sum to be taken value 100 over 101. Now back to the main problem. As mentioned before, the difference between this chain of fractions, our original sum, and the easier version that we have considered just now, follow a similar pattern, which is that between consecutive fractions, numbers at the, at the bottom actually repeat. For the easier version, one number is repeated, and for our original sum, two numbers repeat. So this motivates us to consider to split each fraction into difference of the product of two integers, but not simply one. So let's take a look at this. So for example, one over one times two times three, I'm going to split it, hopefully, into this form, 1 over 1 times 2 minus 1 over 2 times 3. So now we have two numbers multiplied together at the bottom of each fraction. We're just hoping for that. It's not saying that this is really true. Similarly, I'm going to split this fraction into this. Now if these sums are really true, then we have minus 1 over 2 times 3, and down below, because we're adding these fractions, I'm adding the same fraction afterwards, so then they will cancel out. Now, for the next term, hopefully, it will become something of the form 1 over 3 times 4 minus 1 over 4 times 5. So again, we should aim to cancel out these two fractions as well. And this process should carry on all the way to the end at the 100 over 1 over 100 times 101 times 102. But the question is whether this hypothesis is really true. So Let's justify that in an algebraic way. Now, for the product, 1 over the product of three consecutive numbers, I can say this is equal to, or say not equal to, but of the form, 1 over n times n plus 1 times n plus 2. While for a splitted version, it is actually of the form 1 over n times n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 times n plus 2. So let's see whether this really simplifies and gives the fraction above it. So we take common denominator we're multiplying the fractions by n plus 2 on both entries and n for the second fraction. Now simplifying, we have 2 over the product of the three numbers. So we are very, very close to 1 over the product. Now we have 2 over that product instead. So why not we simply say that? We simply claim 1 half of this difference will be equal to 1 over the product of the three numbers. So in fact, we're not really having that to be just split the fractions and then we can cancel out, um, the fractions. We need to multiply that by a factor of one half. And fortunately, this applies to all functions. So our plan to cancel out the fractions, say one over two times three, one over three times four and so on, will not be affected. Now at the end, I shall have something like 
one over a hundred times a hundred and one times a hundred and two should equal to one half times one over a hundred times a hundred and one minus one over a hundred and one times a hundred and two. And in fact, even this fraction at the end should be cancelled out as well. With many things cancelled in between, and at last, we should only have the first term and our final term. So our required sum, in fact, is equal to one half times one over one times two minus one over a hundred and one times a hundred and two. Be careful that we need to half both fractions. So they are placed inside the bracket. So what remains is simply some arithmetic. We take common denominator and then it's 5151 five, minus 1. So we can compute and simplify. We we'll have our final answer to be 2575 five over 10302. Oh, oh, so this is our final answer.